all right guys welcome to the chapter 12 of the substrate course we're doing something very important here we're going to be adding our own custom frame palette to the substrate node okay this means that we're able to highly customize how our node behaves and works okay and adding a completely new palette to the substrate node so for that wherever you've kept your node compiled you go to that folder and you open up your code editor okay so I have a code window open I'll close it and I'll just open it up from here and you have to do a few things quickly you have to go to the palettes uh, folder and the template folder again inside palettes you have to go to SRC folder and you have to delete the benchmark file okay you have to delete the mock.rs file and you have to delete the test.rs file so only lib.rs file will be uh, remaining there then you have to select everything in the lib.rs file and delete it okay and then you have to add a few things so firstly we'll add the macro that's required to build both the native Rust library binary and the WebAssembly. So standard is for the native Rust binary and no standard is for the WebAssembly. Okay, so we need this. Now what do we need? We need to add a skeleton for the macros. So we are using macros inside the uh, frame palette that we're the custom palette that we're creating. So we're not just adding a palette to uh, our blockchain okay we have we know how to add a palette we know how to add a palette in runtime to a blockchain but here we're adding a custom frame palette okay so this is very different so this is the bare bones skeleton structure of what a palette would do okay and this these all these five parts will be replaced by us so if you if you actually go through it you'll you'll understand that this is the config part this is the part where you're able to add events, able to add error handling, able to add storage for that palette and functions that can be called. So callable functions can, can be added here. So one by one, we'll go ahead and uh, replace everything. So the first thing we'll replace is the palette config. Okay, so we've added some uh, configurations for runtime. Then we'll add the ability for events. So we've added some events here, okay. So you can create claim and revoke claim. And we'll do these, uh, we'll handle these two events uh, when we actually start the front end for the substrate node, okay? Then you add the ability to hand handle errors, right? So this approach is very, very structured. So you had these five uh, things in the skeleton and now you're fleshing it out, you're fleshing out the skeleton now. Now you want to add the storage map. So you'll go here and you'll add it. Then you will uh, go ahead and add some callable functions. So here, instead of this part, you'll add callable functions. Okay, so now um, there is an important step that you have to do. So you have to go to lib.rs file and here, uh, make sure that line number 273 has to be commented, commented out. If you don't do this, and now, by the way, this step is not mentioned in the documentation. This step is not mentioned anywhere. And this step, uh, if you don't do this step, you will get into a huge error. So uh, just make sure you comment this out, okay? And now what we'll do is we will go ahead and compile, uh, check our node for runtime. And you will get some warnings because the code is slightly old, but that's okay. Warnings is fine. You should not have errors, okay? So warnings are fine. So we'll get like the, the warnings around the weight uh, part where we're saying that for weight zero, do this, for weight call index one, do this. And what was, what was happening was on line 273, it's, it, uh, palette, substrate was uh, going to connect weight info and think that this is the weight that uh, you know, you're know you trying to call and that that's how the weight you know is imported into your project. Uh, so that's why we had to comment it out. And now it'll say that there is some deprecated constant that you've used, that's okay, those are warnings. But then it will say finished release. So it, it was able to uh, you know check everything, everything works perfectly fine. Now you'll say cargo build release, okay. And this also should uh, work perfectly fine with some with those three warnings, which are happening because of the weight zero part, which is completely all right. All right, 
So as you can see, it has uh, it was able to you know finish building the release, and now we will start off the node in dev mode. So as you can see here, there's a dev flag that means start the node in dev mode, and you can see that it's creating new blocks. So it's importing block number one, block number two, and so on. Now it's time to interact with our blockchain. So to interact with your blockchain, you will open up the same Polkadot.js link that we have been opening up in the previous videos. And you have to verify that new blocks are being generated here. That means your blockchain uh, substrate node that's running and your front end are in sync. Uh, please make sure this is the case. Only then proceed with the rest of the tutorial. Okay. Now we want to uh, interact with the custom frame palette that we have added to our code. How do we do that? So we go to developer, we go to extend six and we go to, uh, and we go and select Alice. In my case, it's already selected. Make sure you select Alice and then you toggle the, um, and then you select template uh, here, template module and you select create claim and here hash a file, make sure it's active. And then we can uh, simply go ahead and submit the transaction and sign the transaction. Now we should get a green tick here on the right. If you see that um, it gets you, so you get a green tick here. Okay. And this is the event extensive given that's happened. So if you see both of these on the top right, that means everything is working perfectly fine for you. And then what you would do is you would uh, try to read the claim. Okay. So you'll go to the developer then you'll go to chain state and you'll change this to template module and claims okay and you'll toggle off the include option button then you'll click on the plus button to execute the query and you'll see the claim here you can see the claim claim that was stored in the blockchain with the data about the owner's address and the block number when the claim was made okay so we created a claim in the previous step and now we're reading that claim and this is how we were able to see that we were able to interact with the claim that we just heard the uh, the palette, the custom frame palette that we just created. So this concludes chapter 12 uh, and by now you've learned a lot about the substrate node and how to interact with it, how to you know uh, make changes in the node, even even making changes in, uh, at runtime. So it's been quite learning and in the next video we'll try and work with smart contracts. See you in the next video.